All right, so ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is uh, part three of our DNA unit. We're looking at uh, protein synthesis and more specifically translation. So here's our little pics from last time. So just a little refresher because everything that happened in transcription we have to make sure that we know about because uh, the product is what happens or what goes into translation. So transcription, as we know, it was where the DNA molecule was broken apart by our RNA polymerase. Uh, the RNA moleculeotides paired complementary uh, to all the different DNA bases and then at the end we just had this single RNA strand that was able to leave and then our DNA coiled back up like nothing happened. We have these three RNA molecules. This is the one that was just produced through transcription. Uh, we have tRNA which we're going to be talking about today and also we'll mention our RNA as well. Alright so let's get right into it. So the whole goal of this gene expression is to make a protein. Uh, in order to make a protein, we need to know what the sequence of amino acids is going to be. So luckily for us, the mRNA, which was made during transcription, uh, has that message. It has the code to tell what order they need to be in. In order for this to happen, though, it has to go to the ribosome because that's where protein synthesis occurs. So like I was just saying, the goal of translation is the mRNA tells what order the amino acid should be in in order to make that protein. So here's just a little visual here. We have our mRNA leaving the nucleus, and it ends up going to a ribosome where the amino acids are going to be produced. So the exact process of translation, before we get into it, you've got to look at what the code is. So we have these things called codons. It means three letters of mRNA. Those letters will be the D or the RNA bases. And just as a quick reminder, remember a nucleotide is made up of a phosphate, sugar and then also the base okay so the base is just one part of the nucleotide so there's 64 different possible codons possible way that those three letters can be joined together but it only makes 20 different amino acids so as you can see even though a UUU would make an amino acid uh, phenylalanine UUC also makes it you do not have to remember this this will be given to you in class the only ones you need to know is this one here AUG. It's also called the start codon uh, and the amino acid is methionine. So this will trigger the start of the whole process and the ones that you also have to be able to not necessarily memorize but just recognize are the three stop codons. If you see these uh, letters together it's going to indicate that you need to stop producing that protein otherwise it's just going forever and it wouldn't work. So what does our tRNA do? We talked about what mRNA does. It takes the DNA message to the ribosome. Once it gets there, the stuff called tRNA, I'm just going to bring up the picture of it, is this kind of complicated structure. There's two main things that we care about. One is this end, and it holds the amino acid. And the other end is here, and it's got the anticodon. So we talked about what a codon is. It's on the mRNA strand, where you have a bunch of letters together. So when you have three together, we call it a codon. So what's going to happen is this tRNA is going to come and its anticodon is going to look for uh, specific letters. More specifically, it's looking for the complementary pair. So as you can see, amino acid binds to one, the anticodon's on the other, and then what it does is specific, uh, specific excuse me, binds to a specific codon of mRNA. Okay. So let's look at this in more detail. So there's three steps initiation, elongation, and termination. Also, there has three binding sites, as you can see here. One, two, and then here's your third one. Okay, so we're going to go into a little more detail here with an animation. So here the sequence of our, uh, mRNA is going to be leaving the nucleus, and it's going to gather in the cytoplasm, which is just the uh, in-between space between any of the organelles. As you can see, we have a bunch of amino acids getting ready to go. And here's what we're looking at here. So if we look at the RNA strand, you see these individual nucleotides. So this is all of the RNA that you made during transcription. We have our ribosome going to be joining up. We have the new terms we talked about, the codon, which is just three nucleotides. And it's just going to start to read the sequence. As you can see, we have AUG, which is our start codon. It codes for the amino acid methionine and here it comes. So here's our amino acid joined together with our tRNA molecule. Looking at our anticodon, so this is the complementary basis for the mRNA strand. 
Uh, here we go. So this is our tRNA molecule. It's big and complicated and looks really weird, uh, but we're going to talk about what they do in, in another second. So all that the tRNA has, it's got the anticodon and then the amino acid here. So what's going to happen is the amino acids uh, being attached to the tRNA are going to bind to the anticodon. It continues along, the ribosome continues along, the next anticodon is placed and the next amino acid. And then what happens in between the two amino acids, this peptide bond forms. And then it just keeps going on. As you can see, the tRNA left because its amino acid was already placed. And now a new one can come along, find its anticodon. The bond is going to be formed again, and then the next one can leave. And it just continues this process until it finds the stop codon. Stop codon, all it is, is just three uh, letters that signify stop. There's no amino acid attached. It's just going to tell everything to break apart. And then the final thing we have is just this polypeptide strand, which will end up folding and becoming a protein like that. And it happens multiple times. As you can see, this is happening a lot in our, our cells because we need a lot of prote proteins. It's not just happening one at a time. All done. You need to know. You need to know why it occurs. Why are we using translation? You also need to recognize methionine, which is the start codon, and then most importantly, the three steps of translation, 